Hello, I am Grandmaster Miguel Iescas. Welcome to the Internet Chess Club. We are covering the World Championship match which is taking place in Dubai between Magnus Carlsen and Jan Nepomniachi. And today they played game number seven. Well, today it's an easy job for a commentator because uh, both players, I believe, they were quite tired after yesterday's effort. And uh, still Nepo was playing with the white pieces, but probably uh, a draw was not so bad. You know the Russian rule, after you lose a game, you should make a draw. This was a very well uh, known and very well accepted on the Russian school. And uh, it makes a lot of sense because uh, after you lose a game, uh, you are not very objective. Um, you may have bad feelings, which may influence your play in the next game. So it was uh, a very established rule. And uh, today Nepo decided uh, to play very safe with the white pieces. And of course Magnus uh, was also happy with the draw because uh, in that way he's consolidating his lead. He's uh, now left with four white and three black. So he is becoming a big favorite on the match. Let's have a look uh, on the first few moves. Uh, they were repeating the Rui Lopez defense. And uh, there was no surprise mm, till move uh, eight. They went, they were following the last uh, two games where Nepo was white with this anti martial A4. We were commenting this opening in a detail in the first game. So, if you are curious to know more things about the Rui Lopez and this uh, martial attack, uh, I recommend you to watch the recap of game one. But okay, let's continue. In, on that game, I mean, on game three, uh, Magnus played bishop b7, but the last two occasions he has moved to rook b8, which is uh, the third main move here. Uh, b4, bishop b7 are much more popular. But rook b8, of course, it's uh, playable and the world champion has already played it twice. After take take, now white plays h3. He has he enjoys some nice play on the a file with rook. And uh, especially interesting is uh, that black never has knight a5. This is one of the good things about a4. Uh, after h3, uh, black played d6, and here on move 11, mm, Nepo deviated from the previous game where he played c3. In that occasion, he played c3 with the idea to play a fast d4. Black went b4, and then he changed and went d3. And this was very clever. Magnus uh, got slightly worse in that game. But for some reason, uh, today, uh, the Russian player didn't want to repeat this c3 and he went d3. Probably trying to surprise his opponent with this new weapon. But uh, truth is that after d3, we will see that uh, Black's play uh, becomes easier, in my opinion. He went h6. This is a typical idea. Black wants to control this square. He wants to play rook e8, preventing knight g5 with the move h6. And uh, at this point, uh, Nepo played knight c3. Well, um, we have to say that uh, sometimes uh, the knight, which sometimes goes to g3 uh, via d2, it can also go there from c3 to e2, g3. It's not so typical, but uh, it's only it's the same three tempi, so it, it makes sense. But the point is that, of course, on e2, the knight is not very well placed, so immediately you have to move it to g3. On f1, the knight can stand for a while and it can sometimes also go to e3, so it's a bit more flexible. But from the other hand, when white plays knight c3, he has a second possibility, it's to jump to d5. And we will see that this is what happened in today's game. White played after rook e8, knight d5. Well, what is this move rook e8? Black wants to play bishop f8 and uh, to complete development, especially his two rooks would be playing quite well after the just uh, 13 moves. After knight d5, um, there are not so many games, I think, because uh, some of games they were playing bishop d2. This is, for example, Dimitrenko, Alexandrov. And uh, after bishop d2, bishop f8, white when knight d5. And okay, it was very similar. White got nothing from the opening. In fact, he lost the game in 38 moves. Um, in today's game, we saw 95 immediately. Uh, we have to say that uh, there are not so many plans here because uh, trying to play in the center with d4, it's a mistake. 
Can you think why? Yeah, it's a strategic question. The game is not so exciting today, so we have to make uh, make it interesting in our own way. So try to find out why d4 is a mistake. Yes, you had time to understand that after knight d4, and this is very typical in the Rui Lopez, pay attention to this idea c5. Sometimes with the pawn a2, this is and the pawn a6, this is immediately winning a piece because it comes c4. Here white is lucky. He has bishop a2, but still this bishop becomes very passive. The rook is also uh, in bad shape after bishop a2. In general, black is doing very well here. It's probably slightly better. His position already is slightly better. So d4 was a mistake. What to do to play active here? Another idea we said already, knight e2. This was maybe possible to try to fight, but black usually can easily equalize with the move bishop e6. He's ready to recapture with the rook. And uh, after the trade of these bishops, white's advantage disappears. So, in fact, not easy to make a real plan here. Knight d5 was played, and then uh, black has a choice. Uh, there was one game, uh, Nexans Kujawski, which went knight takes d5, take, and here black played bishop b7, probably not so precise, maybe the bishop would be slightly better on d7, and white got some small plus in this game. But the move played by Kalsing is clearly better. Bishop f8, it's a very natural move, and, um, well, I mean, the point is that uh, how to continue with white. In the game, he took on f6 and played c3, but the position is uh, already uh, pretty equal. First of all, uh, one piece was traded, which it helps the equality. And uh, now black could play immediately bishop e6. And in my opinion, I don't really see an advantage for white here. But uh, he went first knight e7 with some ideas. Maybe the knight wants to go to g6. And that makes sense. It can be ambitious for black to bring the knight to f4. And uh, maybe try even to organize an attack on the king side using the fact that he has the queen very well placed for that purpose. So, knight e7, it's a flexible move. White went bishop e3. Well, I mean, I would consider to play rook a7 here just to try to use some initiative. Black may answer probably with c5. This is probably the best move. And uh, the next move is coming bishop e6. And I don't really see how to make use of the rook on the seventh rank. I mean, it looks nice, but really after bishop e6, it's really nothing. So, um, Nepo played bishop e3. And I believe that at this point, they already knew, both players knew that this could end very peacefully today's battle. After bishop e6 here, white had the last chance to try to play for a win. I think the move bishop c2 was kind of forced if you pretend to play for a win today. Of course, probably black is fine, but at least here we would have some battle. After bishop c2, white pretends to play d4, and uh, I don't know, probably it's equal, maybe white is slightly better, but the point is that uh, Nepo went d4, he was thinking for a while, and after d4, everything will become clear and equal <laughs> very fast. Look, take. Now, of course, bishop takes was possible, but uh, we cannot already play for a win with bishop c2 because bishop h3. And there is a mate on g2, there is no time for e5. So after ed4, white took on d4, black traded bishops and played knight g6. You may say, well, white has a beautiful center. It's true, but uh, black is ready to play c5 to, to attack precisely white center. And the uh, black position is very safe, very solid. All his pieces are in a very good squares. Um, Nepo played rook c1. I was expecting queen c2, but still c5 is very okay. In the game, it was uh, rook e c1, and then, okay, Magnus played c5. This is bringing immediate equality. Probably he was maybe expecting rook e4. Still, this is also equal. But at least here, white may have some play, some weaknesses. He may attack. He may double on the seventh rank. 
who knows. But the uh, truth is that uh, the Norwegian player went C5, and uh, here, well, I mean, it's impossible to claim an advantage. I, I believe Black wants to take. Also, sometimes he may play C4, and then White tried to complicate a bit the game with E5, but to no avail. The alternative was D takes E5 and take, but then Rook E4, and the position is, of course, equal. After e5, uh, it's going to be equal anyway, even more equal, because, uh, well, black, of course, uh, refrained. He didn't want to take here because pawn takes e5. This can only help white. He went queen f5, which is very natural. Um, if now white plays e takes d6, then he can get a worse position after c4. Black gets two very strong pawns, and this is going to be lost. And most important is that black is going to install a queen on d3 on d5 sorry and later take he's going to be immediately better after c4 so white played d takes c5 and again here black has to take on c5 because if he takes on e5 then c6 and white can be better here with this powerful pass pawn so dc5 dc5 and what is this well you can see by yourself take 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 take, take, and we are going to continue this uh, taking festival. They traded everything and, uh, okay, very soon they were shaking hands. After a few moves, they were, I will play this very fast because it makes no sense. They agreed to a draw on move 41. Well, what can I say of this game? Very typical. After a long battle like yesterday, they were playing almost for eight hours. For today, a draw was uh, satisfactory for both players. Nepo, he can recover uh, from the yesterday's defeat. He can lick his wounds. And uh, for Carlsen, it's a very pleasant draw with Black consolidating his advantage. And now, uh, tomorrow, he will enjoy the white pieces. And we will see. Uh, the situation now became dangerous for Nepo because if he is uh, going to lose us another game, uh, this will be probably be over, be over. But uh, let's uh, remind the match with uh, Kariakin, where I, if I am not remember badly, I mean uh, Carlsen won, and then later Kariakin equalized the score. So anything can happen. Uh, the match is uh, quite exciting, and uh, I hope tomorrow's game will be a good battle, and we can enjoy some good recap. Thank you so much. Uh, this was uh, Miguel Iescas uh, for Internet Chess Club. See you tomorrow.